Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 14 they have blown the trumpet and that's a warning like the air, air nuclear air sirens the uh, air raid sirens even to make all ready it's being prepared a civil defense but none go to battle it's not the proper response in the law there was two silver trumpets and when you were to blow an alarm certain armies were to gather for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof that's God's wrath so your army, your preparation against God is not going to do nothing. God wants the end of your army. He called hailstones upon Sodom and Gomorrah. They went under the city walls of Babylon. Um, I think it was Napoleon's army was stopped by the winter in almost starvation. The sword is without, outside the gates, and the pestilence and the famine within, inside the gates. So no matter what, you're going to get it. He that's in the field shall die with the sword. And he that is in the city, with, without, and then within, famine and pestilence shall devour him. So, Come in judgment of God. Judah's got to the point they're at the end of their rope. But they that escape of them shall escape. There will be some that will get away. And shall be on the mountains like doves of the valley. Doves have that cry of a moaning. But there's not that many doves. All, all of them mourning. And doves mourn, if you ever heard them, in the morning. Everyone for his iniquity. Not for a mate, because of their sins. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. There's just no physical strength. You're even pestilence, or there's famine. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, a sign of weakness, a sign of mourning, a sign of despair, a sign of what else is there? And horror shall cover them. There's a horror movie. Real life. Shame shall be upon all faces. I believe it was Jeremiah said they couldn't even blush. Baldness upon all their heads. Now that baldness, we're, we're not going to look at it because this chapter is loaded. But later on, another place. That baldness has to do with death. That's not a natural book. They are cutting their hair for the dead. As they will print marks and cut themselves for the dead people. It's a heathen ritual that not approved of God. And it's so funny because for a while there, I forget which church I was in, all the men were, were shaving their heads. Ooh, ah, ah, I'm like, and you're supposed to be Bible. You're supposed to acknowledge the Bible. You have in your church name Bible. And you are purposely shaving your head. What's wrong with what's wrong with Christians getting tattoos? Well, God said, "Don't get them." And tattoos are a sign of death. Cutting themselves for the dead in the morning of the dead. And a lot of those tattoos have the symbol that the skull. You say, well, you know, Sally, that's the Old Testament. You know, men should not wear or pertain to, you know, the script. 
Yeah, but uh, Paul says our body is a temple of the Lord. We belong to God. We've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. What are we doing marking our bodies? I mean, the Bible says, as far as nature, doesn't it tell that a man that has long hair is, is not natural? But it didn't say go shave all your head off. And then the Jews, Paul did one time, they would sh they shaved their head for a vow for a petition before God. You want something interesting to study in the Bible, run through the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, about hair. Alright, 7.19. They shall cast their silver in the streets. Woohoo! Get rich. Their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. You're not going to pay the Babylonian army. You're not going to give the Chinese money. You ain't going to pay God. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels. Food. You know, they say a bowel movement. God said there is a filling your bowels, not exiting your bowels. Because of the stomach block of their iniquity. Now, about this verse, Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 20. And we'll start with verse 18. The idol shall surely shall utterly abolish. There's coming a time where there will be no more idols. They shall go into the holes of the rocks and the caves of the earth. For fear the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. For the glory of his majesty when he arise to shake terribly the earth. In that day man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold. Which they made each other for himself to worship. To the moles and to the bats. To go in the cliffs of the rocks, to the tops of the ragged rocks, but to fear the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, for the glory of His majesty when He arises to shake terribly. Oh, that must be important. It's twice. Revelation chapter 6, verse 13. Revelation 6, I hope that's 16. Are you ready, Jehovah Witness? And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. For great is the day of his wrath to come, and who shall able to stand? That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. Back to Ezekiel 7, 19. 7, 19 is a second advent passage to and the Babylonian army. You, you better read the entire Bible. Old, Old Testament. You, you keep saying Old Testament because I hear people say the Old Testament is boring. There's coming a day for the for the Judah that the Babylonian and Chaldean army is going to come. And they're going to try to offer their money. They're going to try to. And it ain't going to. They're going to take your money and kill you. And they're not going to bat an eye. Now, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes with the church behind him, they're going to take all their idols and they're going to cast it away because here comes Jesus. They're going to realize at that moment, 
I'm in big doo doo. They're not even going to dare to try to offer their money and goods because they may not have money and goods because the, the, the commerce of the tribulation period is the mark. So the utter destruction of Judah pictures the second coming of Jesus Christ. And there are some Jews in Judah that are spared. And there will be Jews at the end of this at the end of the tribulation period. There will be Jews that we pick up and bring in the promised land. But don't you think a hundred percent of the Jews are going to be survive when Jesus comes back? Some of the Jews are going to be burnt up. Don't you think everybody, when the rapture happens, everybody's going to be gone? If the rapture happens on a on a church service day Sunday, don't think all the churches are going to be disrupted by the Trump. Some churches are going to go on to, to their worship, and they're going to go on to their song service, they're going to go on to their altar call, and they're going to exit the church, and they're going to go to their restaurant, and they're going to... Then they'll start knowing, hey, if you think every preacher, every Sunday school teacher, every deacon of a Baptist church is going to be in heaven, you're foolish. Now, verse 20 is interesting. We pick up another thing. Old Testament. And I want you to look at a word. Because you'll find this word in the Bible. And you'll find this word, and I'll mention it. As for the beauty of his ornament. And you'll read places in the Bible where they took off their ornaments. And you'll have the, the, uh, the celebration of the birthday of Tammuz. On your Christmas tree, you'll have ornaments. It's not Jesus' birthday. Never was and never will be. I was just reading the minor prophet. That, you know what it looks like to me? And this is extra. It looks like we're all, you're going to have to, every year, have to go celebrate Jesus' birthday. In the millennium. But Lord willing, when we get there, we'll get there. He is set, he set it in majesty. But they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. I will give it the beauty of the ornament into the hands of the strangers for prey. Now prey, you know, when, it, when wild animals find Ooh, yummy hamburger. Ooh, ox burgers. Ooh, zebra sandwiches. That zebra, those oxes, they become prey. There's an attacking animal attacking a defenseless animal. Because a lot, you know, when lion, when you see the videos of lions chasing a zebra or these big other cats chasing giraffes or whatever they're chasing. Most of the time, the animals that they're chasing are the sick ones. That lion pack will, will they're all around. <laughs> you just don't see them. What they'll do is they'll all look, and they'll see, and they'll watch for the sick, the old one, the one that's fooling around, the young one. And when they find that one, hey, listen, you know, well, you know, if we chase that one. We're going to get tired and we're going to get worn out. We're not going to get it. But if we get that one, that's hamburger tonight. So the attacking animal becomes the attacking and the animal of prey, there it is. So the hands of the strangers are the ones doing the attacking. Babylon. But this beauty of an ornament is the prey. And to the wicked of the earth for a spoil. Look how God describes the Chaldeans. 
and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place. For the robber shall enter into it the beauty of the ornament and defile it. What secret place does God have? It's not heaven, because the Babylonian army is not going to enter into heaven. Not if they're wicked. That beauty of the ornament is the temple. The images of abomination, detestable thing. Remember what Jeremiah said? They've got the altars there, the host of all the heaven. They got the Baal priests there, and they got God's priests there, and they got all kinds of imagery and idolatry going on in the temple. And God's going to open up them doors to the Chaldeans and to the Babylonians, which not even the Jews are required. How else do you think Belshazzar has the royal party with all God's holy instruments? You just read it right there. John the Baptist's father, when he's in the holy place offering the incense, he sees this man without wings and he goes, Oh my, what are you doing here? Please, get out. Also was in here offering, and he got leprosy. You don't need to be in here. Uh... I'm Gabriel. I'm an angel of God. You better be an angel or we're in trouble. That's why there was so much terror in his father's Achilles because no one belongs in there. God's going to allow... Now look what he said. The wicked of the earth, verse 21. He's going to allow these most wicked, vile they're going to profane. And they're going to do their Gentile things to mess up that house. Not only, and to destroy it. Friend, no Jew saw that, that the holy place. Never mind the most holy place. And you know, there are foolish people. That, they tied a rope around the high priest. No, they did not. He wore bells. Well, what if, what if the bells stop? Well, you get a new high priest. You don't dare enter into that most holy place. Like... And then the robbers, you see the robbers? That's how the stuff got to Babylon. Ezekiel with Jeremiah said, that temple ain't going to be no more. You know who else said that to the Jews? Jesus Christ. There shall not be one stone upon another. This place shall be destroyed. 70 AD Titus. History repeats itself. Don't change it. Make a change. So you hear, we're going to have a prayer chain. Make a chain symbolizes you're going to be carried by chains to Babylon. Now, I'm not going to say slavery because they're not going to Babylon to be slaves. They're going there in captivity. For the land is full of bloody crimes. The land, not just the city. There are being people being murdered. Never mind the babies being killed by Molech. The city, okay, now the city, there's a difference between the land and the city. The city is full of violence. You know what God did when the earth was filled with violence? Noah? Yes, Lord, I got a job for you. Oh, good, you're going to go to Tennessee. No, no, no. Stay right where you are. 
I, I saw the other day that no that that I almost said no that arc of Tennessee advertises at the local baseball. Can you see Noah advertising himself at a baseball? No. You know what you could do with that money if you were truly serving the Lord? You could missionaries. No, I don't ever want to go to Holy Land and I don't want to go to that ark in Tennessee. Jesus Christ will take me to the Holy Land when it's really holy. And if Jesus Christ wants us to see the, 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 the ark of Noah in the millennium, maybe he'll take us all on a field trip to Ararat. Or maybe he'll flatten Ararat and bring the ark to us. I don't know. People are ridiculous. So, this is what's going on. Do you know, and I'm not going to, I'm going to speak about what I know. Okay, I don't know about England. I don't know about Africa, but I guarantee you it would be true. I guarantee what I'm going to say is true about Russia and China. America is full, the land is full of bloody crimes. Both of guns and automobiles and wife and husband abuse. And the cities are filled with violence. As it was with Belshazzar, as it was in Sodom and Gomorrah, there's coming a time that America's going to get judged according to the Bible. Or as I told you before, God's going to bring all these people up and apologize. But you don't need to apologize. Now watch what he says now, again. Verse 21, the wicked of the earth, verse 24, I will bring the worst of the heathen. That's a pretty remarkable statement. Word of God about people in the earth. What is he going to get the wicked of the earth and the worst of the heathen? To attack his people who have sinned against him. You know what's destroying the church today? The church has allowed the wicked of the earth and the worst of the heathen to come into their churches and they advertise all are welcome. They shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp and the pomp is that, that big foolishness of celebration. You know, when you got the president and he got his big limousine and he's got the you know the secret service all around him and they got the lights and the cameras and the media and all the big show and the great pomp would be the red carpets rolled out for the actors and actresses and all the lights are on and everybody to know everybody the limousine as they go in to go get this stupid little tiny award. That's pomp. You won't see a pomp for a Bible-believing, Christ-centered Christian. If you see a pomp in the church, that's the lights have been turned off. The Catholic Church has their pomp. The priests will get up there, and the altar boys, are, and, and they'll have this big parade all the way up to the front. Look who we are. That's a pomp. Make the pomp of the strong to cease. Yeah, because they Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo were Jewish children, blue blood of royalty. 
and they're given the surgery in Babylon, and they're they're reduced to eat Babylon food. We'll give you a Babylon name, and we'll try to change your language. And to Daniel steps in. All right, and their holy places shall be defiled. That's not God's holy place. That's not the context of, of verse 24. That's the, that's the Jewish high holy place. God has one holy place, and God has one holy of holy. But Jeremiah again, Jeremiah with Ezekiel, you got to read both. On every street corner, there's a church with an altar. That's exactly what he said. As there is in America, in every street corner, there's a church with a holy altar. And I'm so glad you come into the Lord's house. With the cigarette butts on the stairs on the back step. In the chewing gum underneath the pews. And to them, the Baptists, they got the holy. There's no other holy place in our church. I know a church, they, they had a missions conference, and they put pictures, and they put a drone footage, and it was all about their church. Their building. Well, they had a big, fat, Matthew 4, 4, dig out of food. Their anchor is sunk. They ain't carried to no life one. Destruction cometh. So, Ezekiel and Jeremiah are in the same timeline. The third and final time has not come yet. Now, it will come for Ezekiel like it came with Jeremiah, and Jeremiah will give a lamentation, but then Ezekiel will take over. Okay, now we get into the post. And they shall seek peace. A little too late, and there shall be none. You know what's going to happen to the Christian once the rapture happens? And it's real. It's finally there is Jesus, and it's finally real. And the judgment seat of Christ comes up after the thousandth Christian has gone up, and there's been smoke and all that. Oh Jesus, please! Oh please, Jesus! Please, Jesus! I, I, I'm so come on, Jesus! Please give me, please, please, Jesus! Give me a come on, Jesus! Give me something, please. Too late, buddy. Well, in Sunday school, we gave every kid a Tootsie Roll. Well, we don't do that in heaven. Now, how many of those kids use in your Sunday school do you see in heaven today that you fraudulently had to say the prayer that they didn't didn't get saved? Mischief shall come upon mischief. That's not good. That defiles evolution. That's what's going on in the world right now. It's getting worse and worse. We got COVID-19. Well, now we got <laughs> Delta virus. Rumor upon rumor. That's going on today. Hey, get your first shot. Get your second shot. Now you need a booster shot. And wear your mask. But does that really work? Well, we don't know. We're not sure. Then it's a rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. The prophet. Duh. 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 Who? Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Which one? You guys want to speak to us now? We are ready to dead. Wouldn't it be interesting some of these churches I've been in at that moment at the judges say, Oh, Stalin, now tell us the truth. I already did. 
He didn't want to listen. But the law shall perish from the priest. The priest will be killed. The priest will be taken to Babylon. And counsel for the ancients. That's the old people. That's the ones who know, should know. You know, anything to say now. Rehoboam, or Jeroboam, Rehoboam had a conflict with Jeroboam in Israel. And he did what was right. He went to the man that was under his father. That's the ancients. Then he went to foolish. He went to the ones that he went to school with. That's the stupid. The king shall mourn. That would be the very last king. Zedekiah. And the priest shall be clothed with desolation. He ain't got nothing. The prince. And the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. Because it's not their land no more. It ain't their house. I will do unto them after their way. What is their way? Rebellion. They've been rebelling against God. and they're, Oh God, help us. Oh God, save us. <laughs> nope. You're going to get... I haven't written it yet by Paul, but... I am not be I am not going to be deceived. Whatsoever man saw that he shall also read. You have to wait for Paul to say that later on. According to their desert. <laughs> oh, there's that expression. They're just dessert. There, there's an expression on the King James Bible. I'm gonna have some fun. Look over here. Hold on. I'm gonna have some fun. Ezekiel seven. Oh wait. Twenty-seven. Yeah, twenty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So let's see here. Now we use the expression just dessert. You guys just dessert. Alright? So let's see. Right, that one's okay. Let's get a little more in here. Uh, look at the ones. Alright, let's see. Here we go. Let's see. The, the, uh, this one is one. Uh, this is the English Standard Version of what we just read. Now, I hope they don't use the word they're just desserts. According to their judgments, I will judge them. Well, that's not the expression. They're just desserts. Um, I don't want to bother with the Living Bible. Oh, there, let me buy it. Got it. Okay, NIV. According to what they deserve, I will judge them. That's not the expression. They're just desserts. You see, if I'm dealing with somebody, oh, I don't believe the Bible, and they turn around and use the expression, oh, they got their just desserts, I could take my King James Bible and say, ha, you're quoting the Bible. Can't do that with the NIV. Can't do that with the NIV. Uh, RSV. According to their judgments, will I judge them? That's not what it says. I'm trying to find the worst Bible of them all, New King James. New King James, according to what they deserve, I will judge them. That is not the expression. So when somebody, oh, men wrote the Bible, and then they turn around and use the expression again, well, oh, they got their just desert. All right, if you don't believe the Bible, let me show you Ezekiel 7.27 according to the King James Bible. How dare you quote the Bible you don't believe in? I've done that. To some, 
you know, to some, you know, you know, they'll have a particular expression in the Bible, and then I'll show them in the Bible. Oh, you know, by by the skin of their teeth, Job said that. I will I judge them, and they shall know number seven that I am the Lord. How is Israel going to know he is the Lord? Because you got your just dessert. <laughs> you got exactly what you deserved. Now, I know that's what the New King James and those Bibles say, but that's not the expression. So when the city in the in the and the land has been conquered, and all the dust has settled. And the men of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob say, You know what? We got our just dessert. God is God. Jeremiah is right, Ezekiel is right. You know how many people you witness to, I hope you witness to, one day it's going to be, you were right. And God is going to say to many of them still, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Now, what are they going to say to the Christians that don't say no? They let their light shine and is They're going to be screaming, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you say something? 